Hey guys, so today I'm going to go over how to identify something is a scam online. And a lot of you probably will just kind of uh, watch this video for the laughs and entertainment, but I am going to try to make a serious video because there are a lot of scams online. And as I found out, the majority of Magic players are super casual and they might be falling for the scam. As you can see, people are watching. He has 100% feedback and he sold three of them in the last hour. So how do we know this is a scam? Hmm. A booster box for $36.99. Buy it now. You can buy up to seven more of them. Two people are watching. It has free shipping has 30 day returns and it's brand new sealed. Factory sealed. How do I know this is a scam? The price. If something is too good to be true on eBay, Craigslist, anywhere, it is too good to be true. I read, I was watching the news, probably like last month, there was a person in Houston and they were going to buy a truck, a really nice 2018 or 2017 Sierra 1500 that normally retails for $42,000 for $14,000 in cash. Now, I don't know what the used price in the car would be, but I assume it's at least $30,000. It's a $42,000 car new and it's only a year removed. What happened? Well, they were robbed by a gang of people. So, yes. If something is too good to be true on Craigslist, it is two things could be happening. One, it's not real magic cards. It is counterfeit magic cards. And two, you're going to get robbed and lose a piece of your liver and or one or two kidneys. You think I'm joking about this, but I am not joking. So for the discerning magic player, why is this the case? Why is why can't you buy a black lotus on Craigslist or eBay for a dollar? A real black lotus. People who can use these services have internet. When you hear about all these amazing stories back in the day, this was before smartphones. This was before we actually knew what the prices of magic cards are. We had this magazine called Inquest Magazine that would come once a month. And that was the only way that we would know what prices are. I actually used Yahoo, Yahoo's version of eBay to price skates. And that was a terrible version. Uh, that was not, uh, things were not realistic on that, on that website at the time. To the point that it bankrupt, I assume. So yeah, a lot of uh, interesting things. When you hear about all these amazing stories and MTG Finance people telling you all this, I think most of it's fake. And all these, you know, uh, repacks and... No, it, it's got to be fake. Because if someone is savvy enough to create an eBay account to get some positive feedback, to sell some stuff, to have the free shipment... Uh, to do all this stuff, then why would they not know that they can sell this box for $80 or $70 or $65? They could sell all 10 of them. It's because they don't have the box. Look, I'm, you know, I want to get good deals. I want to get an amazing deal on these magic cards. But when something is like so outrageous, that you just have to scratch your head and say, this guy could easily sell this free shipping for double the price. Why is he selling it for half? And you can't say that he's not successful in the scam because he has multiple people buying it and multiple people looking at it within the one hour it came up. I believe this guy has sold hundreds of boxes this way and has not delivered on any of them if you click on the little link. The same with Craigslist or PukerTrade. Why is this guy on Craigslist? And the story is always the same story. It's, 
I broke up with my boyfriend and he left me and now I have these magic cards and I don't know what they're worth but I'm hoping to get $200. Then you look at them and they're Power 9 and Black Lotus is everywhere. They're lilies and from the first two cards you know hmm, something is not right. A, I'm either going to get robbed. B, or these are counterfeit cards. And the whole story, the whole story is the same. There used to be this guy, DNA Comics. I'm just going to call him out. I don't think he works there anymore. I, I hope not for his sake. And he would just buy fake cards out to fake cards because he would see an attractive female and the attractive female would give him the same spiel I just gave you. And he'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, here's my phone number. Let me know. Let me get your phone number and let's talk. And he would just like buy the cards, like fake Tamagoyes, fake Goblin Guides, fake Misty Rainforests. My gosh, everything was fake. And... I didn't know if like he was just bad at his job or if he um, or if he was just trying or if he knew it was fake. It's the same guy who wouldn't give me my Phileas. And you know, obviously, Phileas, I should own as many of them as I can. The buy box Phileo. So I went, I bought a case. I wanted to get six of them because I thought that was good at the time and that's traditionally how it's been. I've been told that was not the deal anymore in most stores. I'm only supposed to get one, but I didn't even get one. I didn't even get one. And I made, I was a loyal customer who spent thousands of dollars at this location and I didn't even get one $2 buy a box promo file after buying a case of Eldrick Moon. Mm. That is the fastest way to lose your customer spending. Disrespect of your average customer. I'm not, I'm not looking for special treatment. Um, I always assume that you get one per box, but apparently I've been told that's not true. And, but okay, whatever. I just want my one then. And they want to give it to me. I saw it. He had a pack of them. And I think he probably just kept them all for himself. Like that is uh, what people do, I guess. So anyway... If you're a casual player and you see something and it's just like ridiculously priced and you you copy and paste Magic the Gathering Omnicat Booster Boxes MTG Factory Sealed, you put it on eBay and you see that the regular price is around 80 bucks with uh, free shipping and this one is way below, you're not getting this box. You're just not getting it. This is a scam. If you're on Craigslist and this dude who knows nothing about magic cards, somehow finds out, somehow when he's posting a picture, has the five most expensive magic cards in his whole collection. Somehow he randomly chose five cards, right? Out of his 10,000 10, card collection, he randomly picked five cards. And they're Underground Sea, Underground Sea, Volcanic Island, Volcanic Island, and Black Lotus. Wow, what are the chances of that, right? Well, amazing. Someone who had no knowledge of magic cards can just pick this. I mean, this must be the most valuable 10,000. No, that's not right. It, when you watch a YouTube video and the guy's pulling like fire, he's pulling a black lotus for a $10 grab bag. You got to scratch your head and say, what the hell? Like a, a lot of these times I look at these repack videos and, and it makes sense. Like, I don't know, the repack is kind of interesting because it is in the repacker's best interest to send good cards to YouTubers. It just is. Like, if I bought a repack and I was like, oh, mtglion.com is buying your repack and 2,000 people are going to see it and he's going to tell you where he bought it from. Do you think a repacker would give me trash? Right, right? It would ruin him. Right? It wouldn't ruin him, but less people would buy it. But what if he gave me, like, Underground C? And I was like, oh, Okay, everyone should go out and buy this because obviously I got lucky here and by total random chance that I'm going to go into a mega rant about how unfair it is for me to be treated better than you guys for magic. So when I went to GP Houston, I'm obviously treated slightly differently than if a random person. I don't think that should be the case and I really don't like that. I don't like it because I think it's the way I treat... It's the way I grew up and the way the startup life works and the way that like um, I, you know, I have San Francisco culture, New York City culture, NYU, William Mary, like all of these things I grew up telling me that everyone should be treated the same 
regardless. Like if I have bad food at a restaurant just because my LinkedIn has uh, X 35,000 followers, I don't even know what they're called. And my Twitter has 40,000. You guys don't know this because you don't follow me on my other channels. But I have some very large channels. My favorite one's LinkedIn. And I should not be treated differently than someone who has no social media presence. I shouldn't be given free product or free boxes or like it just doesn't make sense uh, to me because I, I'll play this way. I will put it in the most simple terms I can put it. I'm not different from you guys. I enjoy the game of magic. I enjoy certain products of Magic. Dragon Maze is my, you know, I'm looking to buy boxes for $50. It looks like it's getting there soon. And I enjoy the game. I enjoy playing at FNM. I enjoy casual Magic a lot more now than I used to. I enjoy the MTG finance aspect. But in no way should you take what I say more importantly than making your own decisions. If you think this sleeve is good because you used it, then it's good, regardless of what anyone tells you. If you think it's bad, it's bad, regardless of what anyone tells you. The same could be said about um, a lot of things in Magic. And the reason I'm making these videos and I'm a little angry in the series was the Eric Froelich thing, the EFRO. I mean, that was, uh, I didn't know about that, about that. I was at GP Houston the time he was there. I wasn't, I didn't stick around for the top eight. But if he had done that and I just tell him, hey, dude, you're not better than me. You're not better than Jacob. You're not better than these people who pay the same exact money to play in this event as you. So why do you have this egotistical belief that people should concede to you? If they asked you, if a random person asked you to concede to them, what would you do that? No, because your friends are also competing in top eight. So... Just the uh, interesting, interesting mechanics of magic and the hierarchy and what I've seen uh, in terms of people being mistreated. I think Unsleeved Media is still being mistreated. And I think Tolarian's being highlighted far more than... Uh, it makes sense to highlight him, but there's some... Like, I will say this again. There's some people like Jeremy who will spend money to make a good event. I think he lost money from... Someone correct me if I this is incorrect. He lost money from his convention that he held, the ban convention. And there's people who take money from the system. There's takers and there's givers. It, it's true in every single society. It's true in every single business. I think that people who give should be rewarded and people who take should be punished. Depends, right? Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.